Today on Woodwork Life, we're gonna talk about three jigs to get professional results out of a job site table saw. Don't sweat the technique. Before we do anything, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, The Home Depot. You can find links to all the products I use in this video at the links down below in the description. They sent me this job site table saw from DeWalt, but typically I make furniture and job site table saws aren't typically known for their precision. So I'm gonna change that by showing you how to make these three simple jigs to get fine furniture results out of a job site table saw. Before I do any of that though, I need to make sure this saw is dialed in. I did an entire separate video on the table saw setup at the link below in the description box. It's pretty straightforward if you ask me. No self-respecting woodworker runs a table saw without at least one crosscut set. There are many much more complicated designs, but this is basically your bare minimum simple to execute crosscut sled. We start by cutting some hardwood runners. These are what we're gonna to use to align the crosscut sled to the miter slots on your table saw. I just so happened to have a piece of walnut that was just the right size to fit into these miter slots, but you could also rip it off a piece of scrap hardwood or whatever you have laying around your shop. I do, however, recommend cutting these out in batches because you never know when you're gonna need another runner. In fact, today we'll need three, so I guess we'll make at least three to start with. You'll wanna cut the runners just a little shy of the depth of your miter slots, so your sled doesn't bottom out in the slots when you're using it. After the runners are cut, you use a couple of spacers, in this case, bolts in the miter slots, to bring the runners proud of the surface so you can attach the plywood base. Super glue is a great way to temporarily attach runners to any shop made jig. I was recently sent a sampling of Starbond's new adhesive and their accelerator, and this stuff has been vital to life around my shop. If you want to try it out yourself, you can pick some out at my affiliate link in the description. It helps me out just a little. Thanks. Now that you've attached your runners to the base of your sled temporarily, and made sure that everything's still moving freely, you'll want to attach them permanently with a couple of countersunk screws. Pick a screw length that buries a little bit of the screw into the plywood base, but not long enough so it pokes through the top. All right, here's where I might differ from a couple of really simple sleds you'll see out there. Some folks like to use construction lumber for the fences on their crosscut sleds, and that's fine, but construction lumber has gotten to be cut from such young trees that every board you will pull out of a rack is twisting in at least two directions. And this will all be error in your final fence. So this is where some decent quality plywood and just a little more super will come in. If you buy decent plywood, this 13 ply stuff is way better than decent, but any decent plywood is gonna be dead flat for our purposes. This means no planing, joining, or any other critical processes to make a nice, accurate fence. I start by ripping these three pieces of scrap plywood just a little wider than the blade raises at full extension. This way I can never split the sled in half. Then, with another super glue trick, we'll laminate these two pieces together for that critical front fence on the sled. This trick allows you to work with the piece immediately with the instant drying super glue, but also get the more reliable long-term lamination of wood glue. You'll start by running a bead of wood glue across the surface of one piece. Then you go back through and add several drops of super glue in areas where the wood glue didn't spread. On the other piece of plywood, give it a spritz of accelerator so the super glue cures instantly. Wait five seconds, and you have a laminated inch and a half thick dead flat fence with no brad nails or anything to worry about cutting through. Again, all of the products I'm using in this project are available at the links in the description. Once that's all set up, take it back to the table saw and clean up one edge. After passing the fence through a second time to get two parallel faces, I like to run a 45 degree chamfer along one corner of the fence. This allows sawdust to get trapped in this 45 degree chamfer so that it doesn't mess up your reference face of the fence. And now with all of our fence parts ready, it's time to attach the back fence of the crosscut sled. The fit of this isn't critical, but I would still try to get it as square as possible. Couldn't hurt anything. With the back fence now installed, it's time to raise the blade through the base plate of the crosscut sled. Just do this slowly and carefully. This line is going to be a reference for installing the back fence. Okay, installing the back fence. This is where things get critical. I like to use William Ng's five cut method for getting a perfectly accurate crosscut sled fence. I'll link to his video down below because he explained this a lot better than I possibly could. But essentially, you try to get it as square as possible initially, 
Then you pre-drill and install one screw as sort of a pivot point on one side of the cross-cut sled. From there, you'll make a series of cuts with guesstimations of square until your resultant piece passes a five-cut validation that the fence is actually, actually, actually square. This five-cut method's pretty cool because it gives you actually two forms of validation. Because each of these corners is actually up to five times amplification of the error of square with your cut, since you're using each previous cut as a reference service for the next one. But you can also go all beautiful mind on this scrap piece and figure out exactly how far out of square you are. Now, you can go absolutely crazy with this chasing thousandths of an inch, but if it's within two or three thousandths over the length of the board, it's usually pretty good. All right, so now that we've made the king of all jigs in the crosscut sled, let's make the Grand Duke with the zero clearance insert. Uh, this isn't a jig per se, I know, but man does it improve that professional results of your work. We'll start with a piece of plywood or hardwood about the thickness between the mounts of your factory table saw plate and the surface of the saw. Fortunately on this DeWalt, that's exactly half an inch. Next, using the factory insert plate or precise measurements that the factory plate doesn't fit very well, trim your plywood down to the width of the opening. From here, we'll use the factory insert plate to mark your piece of plywood for the two curves that we'll rough saw out with a jigsaw. When you're cutting this with a jigsaw, make sure you leave the line because we'll be cleaning this up at a flush trim router later. Using a palm router or router table, set the bearing of your flush trim router bit to the edge of the factory insert plate. We're gonna use that as a pattern. Ensure the insert plate is attached securely to plywood using double stick tape, or, if you're too lazy to find that, a couple pieces of packing tape do just fine. Once your zero clearance plate is completed, remove the packing tape and test fit the plate into your saw. Use the fence to hold the plate down into the slot and slowly raise the blade to create the slot for the blade. All that is left is drilling a finger hole so that it's easy to remove and change out, and it may also be a good idea to add some leveling screws, or if necessary, add a retention tab if your saw requires that to remain secure. But now you can cut thin strips and veneered plywood without worrying about chip out or trapping scraps inside the blade. You could probably make a couple of these so you can use them for angle cuts and dados as well. All right, so this next one may seem a little bit redundant to the crosscut sled, but this is actually a joiner or a rip sled. It's super, super versatile. Not only is it able to joint lumber, but you could also throw in a reference fence and a couple of clamps and turn this into a tapering jig or even something you can use to cut segments for segmented bowl turning. These are super, super versatile sleds and super, super easy to make. So you start by just attaching the runner the same way we did in the crosscut sled. With the runner attached, we're just gonna trim off the excess on this piece of plywood. And that's basically it. Now you have a flat reference surface that you can connect to a piece of lumber with screws or clamps or whatever you can get your hands on. Like I said, you can add a fence, really whatever you need to do to run something parallel with the blade. In this case, I'm just using it to joint one edge of this piece of rough sawn white oak, and then I can cut the other edge parallel to that original face getting a jointed board that's at least S2S, and then I just need to work on the other two faces. I hope you found this video on three quick jigs to get more professional results out of your job site table saw useful. Please let me know if you have any questions down in the comments section. I try to respond to as many of those as I can. If this is the first time you've seen me, be sure to hit that like button and get subscribed to see more of my future videos. And thanks for watching, and remember, keep your tools sharp, and keep your mind sharper.